Thomas is a returning citizen, a free man since January 2020, taking advantage of work opportunities like the COVID-19 testing site at the state fairgrounds through Detroit at Work, which then got him connected to the city's alley cleanup project in August. Looking back at being incarcerated, that's on the back burner. We learn from it, but we don't forget about it. Turn the citizens that come out here. This is a job with Detroit. It's beautiful. I love it. I hate to take a day off. Program manager Crystal Perkins says the alley cleanup program is modeled after the border brigade, which also employed returning citizens. She says that program hired 100 people. About 35 to 40 percent went on to get hired full time by the city. The alley program has 40 to 55 employees and about 35 percent are returning citizens, staying productive and out of trouble. So one of the big things is is boredom. Cheryl Kubiak is the dean of the School of Social Work at Wayne State University and used to run a reentry program in the city for women. She says going from regimented life behind bars to a free society full of choices can be overwhelming. Having employment that provides you with a regular schedule that provides you socialization to others who are doing kind of the work of life is really a, a really helpful support benefit. But the more meaningful the employment is and the higher the wages, the most likely people aren't going to go back into criminal behavior. Wallace says he's not going back to that life and that people in his shoes can look to him as an example. Everybody might look at it like, oh, it's a dirty job. But it's a job, and I like it because it keeps me busy, it keeps me motivated. I got a lot of big family, a lot of friends and family that's proud of what I'm doing. Because I had setback in my life, but it's never too late to pick up. It's never too late to pick up. Darren Cunningham, 7 Action News. Second chance is so important. Mm -hmm. Well, Detroit police bust an illegal gun making operation less than 24 hours after deploying a new high tech system capable of detecting gunshots. Uh, shot spotter technology led officers to a home on Hoyt Street near Seven Mile on the city's east side. They found 75 shell casings in the backyard there. Guns were apparently being tested on a van. It was riddled with bullet holes. The chief says that they were making so called ghost guns there. Imagine a manufacturing operation in a residential community, making guns, selling guns, and guns that are ghost guns that are untraceable. Chief Craig says officers arrested two known gang members, and one of them was recently involved in a non-fatal shooting that endangered a child. Well, today's going to be very windy. A wind advisory begins at 11 a.m., but the wind's already picking up. You can tell just by looking at the camera shaking around downtown. How strong the winds are going to get this afternoon, plus uh, how much colder it's going to be today in the forecast. And next, a new partnership for the Michigan Science Center. What an affiliation with the Smithsonian means for visitors. That's coming up in a live interview. You're watching 7 Action News this morning on TV 20 Detroit. At a new partnership for the Michigan Science Center has been designated a Smithsonian affiliate, the only Smithsonian affiliate in Detroit. And here to tell us what this means for the institution and for visitors is uh, CEO Christian Greer. Thank you uh, so much, Christian, for uh, joining us this morning. Keenan, it's good to be with you. All right, so you got some great news. So tell us what it means to be a Smithsonian affiliate. Well, it's a big deal. It's a big deal for the Michigan Science Center on my side, and it's a big deal for Detroit. We get an opportunity to tap into the world's largest museum system, and they have 19 facilities, um, which are museums and galleries. They have nine research uh, facilities that they use and 500 scientists. So as a science center with science as our middle name, it's nice to be connected with uh, such an extensive network. We're hoping to do uh, collaborative programs and we're also hoping to bring in potential new exhibits. So it'll be an awesome opportunity for uh, visitors and guests as well as families, parents and schools. All right, so that sounds fantastic. So visitors will see the difference. They'll see sort of the, the benefit of this uh, affiliation. That's correct, and we, we already started. Uh, we worked with Smithsonian um, just a month or so ago to distribute some of their visitors' uh, guides for 
um, learning STEM. And so they do these seasonal guides and we worked in partnership with Detroit Public Library to be able to do it. So we've already distributed out to the libraries 5,000 STEM guides from Smithsonian. So it's a wonderful opportunity. And we've had an uptick in membership recently. A ton of people are signing up for our members and they didn't even know about this or maybe they, they, maybe they were feeling something good coming. And so we're hoping to be able to do more for our members and connect to uh, the communities in Southeast Michigan and beyond. All right, well, you guys are already doing some great things there. We all know that. So I think that might be responsible for the uptick. Tell us a little bit about uh, the process. How did the Smithsonian choose the Michigan Science Center? What were they looking for? Yeah, well, it's a competitive process and they're always looking for an organization that can be a hub. And, and that's something that we pride ourselves on. We don't have to do everything uh, associated with STEM. We wanna be able to partner with other organizations, upstart community STEM organizations, um, other partners with other museums and other there are other Smithsonian affiliates in Michigan that we will be partnering with. But they were more so looking for an opportunity to expand their science center network and we have a spark lab which is sort of a makerspace tinkering studio for young people that is sponsored and supported by smithsonian and we're looking to expand that with them and so that made us a great candidate and detroit is a great city this is a great place for smithsonian i think to be able to connect all right fantastic and of course we have a great legacy of science and innovation here uh in detroit so tell us a little bit of what else you guys have going on i mean it is uh you guys have always been adding things. What, what's new there? Well, the innovation never stops. And, you know, our, our sort of mantra is that my side puts you at the center of science. We want people that are in the margins, people that maybe feel like they're not a scientist, to come work with us and connect uh, to science and STEM. So this includes engineering, technology, and math. So we've got a couple of new projects that are coming up. I'm actually sitting here with this backdrop of the International Space Station because we had a Michigan Science Center patch fly aboard the space station by astronaut Chris Casty. Can you imagine a patch from the Michigan Science Center was up in space for 196 days, wow. 250 miles up, traveling around the earth at 17,500 miles per hour is a wonderful opportunity for us to connect with folks. But we've got a new exhibit that's coming and uh, I can't tell you all the details about it, but parents and teachers are gonna love it. They'll probably thank us for it because it's important. It deals with uh, opportunities for us to address the learning loss Right. Um, from the COVID uh, to K-12 education, which will be very important. And we hope to be able to show it because it is an exhibit that premiered, mm -hmm. its worldwide premiere was at Smithsonian many years ago. So we're excited about this. All right, and I'm excited about uh, what you guys are doing there. I, as I've told you before, I've been there with my children. It is a fantastic spot. Uh, you guys are right there on John R. in the uh, museum district, uh, Thursday th through Sunday, uh, 10 to four. And if you want more information, you can go to my dash -sci Dot org. Christian Greer, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Really appreciate it. Thank you. All right, well, let's go to uh, our station scientist, 7 First Alert meteorologist Kevin Jeans. Hey there, Keita. Good morning. It's going to be real windy today. Gusts as high as 45 miles per hour. We have a wind advisory that's going to start at 11 o'clock this morning and last until 8 p.m. Lakeshore flooding also a possibility today because the winds are out of the northeast coming off the lakes. Very windy. Now we've had rain this morning. So far it's been light in some cases, either just some drizzle. Some spots don't rain at all so far. So uh, though there is some rain, um, it's very light and I don't expect much impacts from the rain. St. Clair Shores to Warren, Ferndale, Sterling Heights, Farmington Hills, light rain or drizzle right now. And other areas uh, north of M59, nothing. And this is likely going to be dry the rest of the day, but I do expect more rain to develop south of I-94. And that rain could linger into the afternoon if you live south of I-94, closer to Ohio. That's where most of the moisture is. It's a big area of low pressure. This has been uh, the reason why there's been severe weather across the south. And now the severe threat has shifted farther to the east to include the Carolinas over the next 24 hours. So our forecast here is some light rain to drizzle this morning. Very windy this afternoon, but dry Drying out this afternoon too. High of 44 degrees with wind gusts again as high as 45 miles per hour. So really windy. 28 degrees tonight. And it's still going to be windy overnight. So wind chills drop in the teens tomorrow. Bright sunshine and breezy, but lighter wind than today. We'll have 10 to 20 mile per hour winds tomorrow. 47 for the high. Then we warm up through the weekend. The first weekend of spring. 53 Saturday, 59 Sunday, and next week we're in the 60s.
Woo, like those 60s. We do have some breaking news right now. Look at this utility pole. It looks like it's about to fall over. It's happening in Berkeley at Woodward Avenue and Catalpa. Police have closed off this area. Crews, are, have, as you can see there, are now on the scene trying to deal with this utility pole. Drivers are being asked to avoid the Woodward Avenue area near Catalpa and Berkeley while they try to repair it or take it down. Our time now is 819. The IRS is pushing back the deadline to finish our taxes. Why the agency is giving us another month to file a return. You're watching 7 Action News this morning right here on TV 20 Detroit. The IRS is removing some of the stress from tax season. Yeah, the agency is extending the filing deadline. The deadline is being pushed from Thursday, April 15th to Monday, May 17th. The government is allowing more time because of the challenges caused by the pandemic. The IRS is also dealing with a massive backlog of returns while working to send out new stimulus checks. Matthew Stafford's trade to the LA Rams is expected to become official today his heartfelt message as he leaves Detroit. You're watching 7 Action News this morning on TV 20 Detroit. News. Good morning, it's 827. I'm Keenan Smith. New this morning, a suspect has been arraigned in a deadly stabbing in Southfield. Police say 22 year old Aaron Riley is charged in the death of 27 year old Jerome Samuels. Officers responded to a report of a stabbing at the Lancaster Hills apartment complex early Monday. Samuels was rushed to the hospital but died. No word this morning on a possible motive. And developing overnight, police say two men are recovering after being stabbed following an altercation in Greektown. It happened last night after 10 p.m. in the area of St. Antoine and Monroe. The victims were taken to a local hospital. Both are expected to survive. Investigators say after the stabbing, the suspect ran away from the scene. Anyone with information is asked to call Detroit police. And at 10.30 this morning, Governor Gretchen Whitmer and Lieutenant Governor Garland Gilchrist will visit Fort Field to unveil new details about the Max vaccination site uh, opening next Wednesday. Now, this comes as the state reports a new surge in cases. Yesterday, we reported our highest single-day total since January, but thankfully, there were no new deaths. The spike in cases is being attributed in part to the spread of the B117 variant, which is now found in 31 counties statewide. Cold, windy, wet weather today. The winds get much stronger this afternoon, but this morning we're also experiencing some light rain and drizzle. But some of the gusts we've had just uh, since midnight, so this is basically over the last uh, hour, we've had some gusts around 20, even up to 30 miles per hour around Metro Detroit. Uh, a thin band of rain is very light right now, but expanding from Wayne County across Washtenaw County. Light rain off and on the rest of this morning. A high of 44 this afternoon, but wind gusts today are going to pick up with gusts up to 45 miles per hour between 2 and 5 p.m. All right, thank you very much, Kevin. Remember, you can watch 7 Action News Live and get updates on the big stories 24-7. Just search WXYZ on your favorite streaming device. Taking action for you. You're watching 7 Action News this morning. Now at 830, March Madness is back, and the Wolverines and Spartans are in the big dance. Who we've picked in the final four and how you can challenge us online. And it's a big day for fans of Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman. The four-hour director's cut of Justice League is now available to stream. The new scene shot just for this version. Wait, did you say four, four hours? Hours? Yeah. That's, that's a right. commitment. And that's why the studio wouldn't let him do it. <laughs> right? <laughs> right. You know, he wanted to put out his thing, and they were like, dude, four hours? If you're a fan, you're wishing it was eight hours, so... <laughs> 
It's like, you know, we only charge the same, we charge the same price if the movie is like four hours or two hours, right? Good point. It's going to be two hours. Mm -hmm. Wow, four hours. Okay, I think I might see it because I missed the first one, so. Let's get to the morning buzz, shall we? We're going to get to that. First, though, March Madness, everybody. Get those brackets down. The Wolverines and Spartans men's basketball teams are hopefully on the road to the Final Four. Yeah, that's right. Uh, both teams saw their seasons disrupted by COVID. Michigan State, though, went on a run towards the end to keep their tournament streak alive. The Spartans will take on UCLA in a first four game. That is tonight at 9.57 p.m. Meanwhile, the University of Michigan is a number one seed after winning the Big Ten regular season championship. The last time the team was number one seed was in the 1993. That's when uh, Coach Jerron Howard played for the team. Wolverines play Saturday against the winner of tonight's game between Texas Southern and Mount St. Mary's. I did not know that note about Coach Jerron Howard. I mean, that's mm -hmm. poetic. It's meant to be. Long time. Well, he said there's some unfinished, uh, unfinished business to do, and here he is oh. trying to get it done. I love it. Well. We all made our predictions for the tournament, and clearly I want Coach Jawan Howard's dream to come true. Uh, I have number one seeds, Michigan and Gonzaga facing off, and then Michigan moving on to face number four ranked Purdue, who I have beating ninth ranked Georgia Tech in the final four. So, I mean, half my bracket's safe, the other half, a little wild. That's right. Well, uh, my bracket features a couple of number one seeds. I have Michigan and Baylor making it to the final four, but I also have six seed U uh, USC and fifth seed Tennessee coming out of their regions. I also have Michigan winning it all. And I've got Gonzaga staying undefeated, taking on the championship. Gonzaga, Gonzaga. Either Gonzaga, one. Gonzaga. Whatever, they're undefeated. So <laughs> Not Gonzaga. <laughs> My final four uh, is, is also Big Ten heavy. Michigan, Ohio State, Illinois coming out of their region. So what if Michigan and Ohio State end up in the championship? Would that not be okay. cray cray? That would be cray. You know, Allie's out today. She did fill out her bracket, though. Here are her final four picks. She also has Michigan winning it all, so I guess three of us have picked that. Allie has Kansas, North Carolina, and Illinois joining the Wolverines in the final four. All right, now we invite you to uh, join in on this competition. I was going to say friendly competition, but I said that earlier, and both Alicia and Kevin was like, no, it's not. I say no, but yet I have 0% confidence in any of my graphic, or, uh, brackets that I've done. I think I took two minutes, two whole minutes to fill mine out. Uh, I like that. Unnecessary uh, competitiveness. <laughs> <laughs> we're not, we're not uh, friends. We're going to beat you. I yeah. didn't do anything. Uh, that said, we do invite you at home to join in on the fun. Uh, you can compete with us and other 7 Action News anchors and reporters. Just go to WXYZ.com to fill out your bracket, and then you can gloat when you beat us. I always get to the end of the, whenever I fill it out, I just go one by one, click, 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 okay, and then I get to the end, I'm like, that's not what I wanted, <laughs> all right. You should go backwards, said the woman who's never done that, but. You're onto something. <laughs> well, the trade of Matthew Stafford from the Lions is expected to become official today. Stafford is saying a tearful farewell to Detroit. It's time to say thank you, Detroit. To Lions fans hearing this, there is no me without you. So I'm saying thank you, not goodbye. Thank you for everything, Detroit. Sincerely, number nine. Now by tearful, I meant that Alicia has tears after <laughs> That is true. You can watch Stafford's full video on WXYZ.com. Quarterback was part of the Lions for 12 years. The deal to, to send Stafford to the LA Rams uh, bringing Jared Goff to Detroit. Of course, the Lions and Rams will play in LA at some point next season. We wish him well, and, and we welcome Jared Goff. We do, yes. We do want to welcome Jared. We are excited that he's joining the team, but I, I really think that video, it was so beautifully put together, too. If you haven't watched it, I watched all nine minutes this morning. Somehow still managed to make it work. It's, it's hard not to, to pull for him, to root for him <laughs> Thank you. Uh, with the Rams. Thank you, Keenan. I'm good. See, you got <laughs> See? it. Uh, uh, you're not good. You're not good. <laughs> but, I mean, you know, Brad Galley said it best. Like, 12 years in the NFL is like an eternity. So, for people out there who are like, eh, you know, Matthew Stavros, I, 
I mean, seriously, he accomplished so much here with the Lions, and they're going to retire his number one yeah. day. Number the, the average um, NFL career is what, like two, three years, maybe. Right. So with uh, 12 years, it's it's incredible. And uh, and very quickly before we move on, he grew up here, right? I mean, he came here out of college as you know 20 something, and now has a whole family and a career. So congrats to him. And uh, today is a big day for fans of superheroes. The director's cut of Zack Snyder's uh, Justice League is now streaming on HBO Max. Completing the movie required an enormous amount of visual effects. And filming a new scene even with Jared Leto and Ben Affleck during the pandemic. The film, as Keenan mentioned earlier, more than four hours long. It's presented in six chapters and an epilogue giving viewers the opportunity to watch at their own pace. So it's like intermission. You can go, there are bathroom breaks, you know. Yes. Get some popcorn. Before kids, I might have been able to watch it, but there's no way. Four hours? No. No, probably not. In stages throughout the week. Well, opening a dialogue with an online museum for black voices. The creator will be joining us live to talk about the inspiration for Darker Than Blue. You're watching 7 Action News this morning right here on TV20 Detroit. I'd imagine being responsible for another life becomes difficult to process. Are we what they wanted? Or did they realize the blessing once we arrived? Wow, a new digital art exhibit is looking to open up a dialogue and give a platform to black voices. It's called Darker Than Blue, and you can find it on Instagram, Instagram only right now. Joining us now to talk all about it is curator and award-winning director, Zachary Cunningham. Zachary, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for having me. Tell us a little bit about this, because it's just in and of itself, you know, launching something on Instagram only is unique, but you have a good reason for that. Sure. So uh, Darker Than Blue is a digital art exhibit where we're going to be releasing short films every month for the rest of the year from uh, different creatives and directors from around the city. And we just wanted to kind of unify and promote, kind of form Voltron and promote these black voices talking about issues within the community in a kind of like high art way. And, you know, obviously this year, the past year, uh, with social justice um, really taking more a center stage in the public conversation, Black Lives Matter, for example, uh, what was your inspiration to put this together now? So my inspiration was just to, like, promote voices in a unified way. So I think, like, right now we have artists scattered. We're kind of working in silos to a degree. But I think it, it hits a little differently when you have 10 artists coming together and we're consistently releasing something. And it's high art. It's elevating. It's talking about issues that haven't been talked about in the public. So we're bringing to light certain issues that haven't been addressed in the last year. And let's talk so, a little bit um, about that. Are you, you know, having a conversation with all the different artists talking about who's going to tackle a certain topic or are they all just doing what's, you know, speaking to their heart at the moment? How did you go about that? Yeah, so I literally said, hey, what do you care about? What do you care about? And let's make something and let's do something that you've never done before and let's elevate it and like let's take something to the people that any of us have never done before. And um it's, it's just beautiful to watch, to see everybody expressing themselves freely and creating just really unique pieces of art. I'm sure it's going to be very authentic since it's really coming from each and every one of them. Who are some of the artists collaborating on this project? So we have uh, my producing partner, Charles Kennedy. We have uh, Latoya Colts. We have uh, DeLorean Burton. She was just one of the 40 under 40. Um, we have uh, Jasmine Bean. We have my wife, Kelly Cunningham. 